Hello, Prince. I'm Padmin. like to welcome everybody to the first pilot episode of the Paranormal Planes podcast. My goal here is to get people's stories from South Dakota and around the Great Plains. Can I keep it at home? Because I know there is tons of people with tons of paranormal stories, whether it be ghost stories, UFOs, Bigfoot, uh, into all of that stuff. Absolutely adore it. And... I just wanted to bring a bunch of people together that have the same interest and have them share their stories and they can actually either go to the Facebook page Paranormal Planes and share it there and I will read it on a podcast or you can email it to me or message, I guess it would be a Facebook message to the Paranormal Planes page and just let me know if there's anybody that doesn't want their name actually put out there or use a fake name for it or something but definitely want to get the town that it's from because that's really an important part about it because I want to kind of keep with the theme of keeping it into the area of the Great Plains so we're going to start off here and read the first story and this one is from Sioux Falls that is where we are broadcasting to you guys and this I don't know I think it can't be too far away from us because it's on West 10th Street and we're like between 9th and 10th here in Sioux Falls well here's the first story a few years ago we moved our family to a home on West 10th Street in Sioux Falls we started hearing noises from the basement almost right away but the only thing in the basement were long heavy cast iron pipes At first, I thought the cats were down there causing a ruckus, but there was no way for the cats to get down there to cause those pipes to clang together. The kids liked to stay up late and watch TV, but my son never wanted to be left sleeping on the couch. He would tell me that he did not like it when the old man watched him from the kitchen. According to my son, the man would never come past the kitchen door but he would just stand there and stare at him. I asked him to tell me what this man looked like. He told me that he had gray hair, a bushy beard, and was always wearing a red and blue flannel shirt with jeans and boots. I asked him if the man looked angry. He said no, but he never smiled either. Not knowing what else to do, I made sure that my son was never left alone sleeping on the couch anymore. Some days later, I was upstairs on my bed watching TV when my sister called me. She asked what I was doing. I told her I was upstairs in my room. Then she asked, who's that older man standing in the back door looking outside? I said there was no one else here except for me. Then she told me of an older gray-haired man standing at the back door looking out. I asked her to describe him to me. She said he was an old man with gray hair and a beard, wearing a red and flannel shirt and suspenders. I told her then about my son and told her that he described the same man to me. He wanted to know more about the man, so she asked the former owner's great nephew who that was. In the meantime, my husband was so skeptic about the stories he had been hearing from all of us that he didn't want to believe in the supernatural until one evening we were watching TV in the living room munching on snacks he decided to go up and throw away some of the trash we had compiled he walked into the kitchen and a few seconds later came back out with a very strange look on his face he told me that some of the trash had fallen on the floor and so bent over to pick it up and he stood back up and came face to face with the old man in the flannel shirt and suspenders he was visibly shaken and I was a little thrilled as he was no longer a skeptic a few weeks later my sister called me 
and told me that she had found out that the great uncle of our friend had died in that house some years back. The house had a few different owners since then. The uncle had a small shop in the basement and he would spend many hours down there tinkering with things. He, she asked if he had any photos of him and he was going to ask his family if they did. Not having a photo, she asked what the uncle was like. She was told that he had gray hair, a bushy beard, he loved to wear flannel shirts, and always wore suspenders to keep his pants from falling to the ground. He was a kind and loving man that stayed in the kitchen mostly because his wife would not let him pass the doors because he was always full of something from the shop. After hearing this, I felt that this man many or may not even know that he had passed. One night I went and sat on the steps to the basement and told him, even though we did not mind him around, that others were waiting for him. To make sure I was clear, I told him that he was dead and he needed to move on. After that night, we never heard or saw him again. This one was submitted by Anonymous, but like I said before, it was a story from a house on West 10th Street here in Sioux Falls. And I've got quite a few stories that I will add in of my own as we go along with this podcast about houses here in Sioux Falls. And I've also lived in Madison, which I've had, well, most of my life I lived in Madison. I've lived in lots and lots of crazy haunted houses. Absolutely just freaked me out at the time, and now I'm just obsessed with remembering the stories and telling the stories and hearing the stories that everybody else has. So I've got um, Angela, my girlfriend, she's going to read a story on the podcast next. And then after that, I have a gal named Ghoulish Gal, which she has a YouTube channel you can check out there as well. It's under Ghoulish Gal. And she does a lot of different Uh, paranormal haunted stories and stuff like that but there is a certain section from South Dakota so I'll be playing a clip of a South Dakota ghost story that she narrates there as well enjoy the following account took place approximately June of 2002 on a farm west of Hurley South Dakota I was 18 and had just begun dating a girl I worked with, but there was a lot of driving involved for us to see each other. We lived better than 50 miles apart and worked in a city in between us. To spare myself the commute, I decided to move to a farm outside of a town with her uncle, who was a friend of mine. It was more or less a shabby hobby farm, as nobody living there was working the surrounding land. The house was dirty and run down, and the living room would practically flood whenever it rained. I brought myself to deal with it, so that I could be closer to my girlfriend. Besides, I was really only going to be there to sleep. I had been there about a week, sleeping on the floor in what was pretty much the upstairs living room each night, because I never made time to clear all the junk out of what was supposed to be my room. Sleeping on the floor for this long proved to be more than my back wanted to tolerate. One night, around 11 o'clock p.m., I had had enough, and decided to clear out the room and move my things in. I was probably at this for two to three hours and finally laid down in my newly remodeled room around 2 a.m. to catch a few winks before I had to be up for a 35 mile drive and a long day at work. I was awakened by the sound of boot steps coming up the stairs and the hallway light being turned on. It startled me because both the uncle and the homeowner were away for the week and my girlfriend had no license or means of transportation to get to the farm especially at 2 something a.m. I was home alone and had shut all the lights off before going to bed. As the steps reached the top of the stairs, I squinted my eyes open just far enough to see the silhouette of a man leaning against one side of the door frame before closing them again. At this point, I believe I have an intruder. The new setup of my room included a long coffee table against the wall to my right, upon which laid a sword that I used in my study of Japanese martial arts. 
I made the decision that I'm going to explode out of bed and simultaneously draw the sword and cut this guy down. I got my breath right, and the very instant I'm about to leap out of the bed, he starts talking to me. But his voice is directly next to my ear. This means in two seconds he crossed the hardwood floor to the back of the room without making a sound, knelt down in the twelve inches of space between my mattress and a smaller coffee table, and began speaking as though he had been there all along. I, however, didn't bother processing all of that fully, because I recognized the voice to be the uncle's. At least I thought so at the time. His room was upstairs next to mine, and I figured he was home early and on his way to bed. I had noticed what I had done to the room. Even the next day I couldn't have repeated our conversation verbatim, but I do remember the first thing he said to me was to the effect of, I see you got the room all fixed up, and it looks really nice in here now. We conversed about it for maybe a minute, and then he said, well, good night, and the hall light turned off after he left the room. The next day I went about my routine, went to work, and hung out with my girlfriend for the rest of the night until around 10 p.m., then went back to the farm to retire for the night. When I got there, I found all the lights on and the uncle tooling around in the kitchen. He acted all surprised to see me. It was kind of strange. We hung out for an hour and a couple of years, when in the middle of the conversation I asked him about something he had said to me last night when we were talking in my room. He shot me a very confused look and explained that he had just got back from his trip today, and only a few hours ago at that. The flood of adrenaline that went through my body at that moment was almost crippling, unless the intruder had bothered to lock the deadbolt as he left, and knew of some way to latch the door chain and lock all the windows from the inside, I had spoken to a ghost. Second Incident because I had no other place I could go, and because the encounter was relatively friendly, I stayed in the house for a few more weeks. I always had to know when someone else was going to be around, though, because I refused to be there by myself. I guess I was always kind of waiting for something else to happen, but nothing ever did. Then I woke up one morning and started down the stairs. As I came around the wall and made the sharp left turn hallway, down the staircase, I caught, with both eyes wide open, the bare foot and leg of a woman, under a white gown, stepped quickly from the bottom step in front of me. I stopped in my tracks, because there should be no such woman in any such clothing here right now. I immediately thought it must be my girlfriend and started calling her name while heading the direction I saw her run. I realized something wasn't quite right, because my girlfriend doesn't wear gowns, dresses, or skirts, and she wasn't responding as I called her name. I searched through all the rooms downstairs and realized that the uncle and homeowner were both gone and they were both single anyway. I braved the creepy, cobwebbed basement nobody ever goes into and went back upstairs and searched those rooms. I even went outside and searched the property, the barn and sheds, but there was nobody. I left after that and found my girlfriend at her house waiting for me to show up. When I realized it wasn't her I had seen, we went back, moved my things out, and I've never returned. All right, I'd like to thank Angela for reading that story for us. And next is Ghoulish Gal, as she narrates a story from her YouTube channel, a story from South Dakota. When the real estate agent was showing me the house, I specifically asked if it was haunted, or if anyone had died in it. She said no. I liked the house, the price was right, and it wasn't infested with spirits, so I bought it. Everything was fine. For a month or so. My first indication something was amiss was the simple sensation that I was being watched. Next came the creepy feelings of dread in my bedroom. Now, I've always slept in total darkness. When I tried doing just that in my new house... It felt as if somebody was hovering mere inches from my body. That and the being watched thing, so the light stayed on. Then there were the footsteps. That was in my room on the second floor, and I heard my partner coming up the stairs. I looked and found nothing. Turns out, he was fast asleep in the basement family room. My son woke up late one night with scratches on his back. They looked like burn welts, and the whole area was red and roughly shaped like a hand. 
He went into the kitchen and came back immediately to say there was a little girl standing in the backyard. It was two in the morning. He said she was dressed in a white sleeping gown but couldn't see her feet. They weren't there. We've had faces knocked over, heard voices, been touched, and there's one window in my son's room that keeps opening on its own. I screwed it closed, but a month or so later, I found the screw laying neatly on top of the open window. I decided to start a blog to keep track of everything. I also had a psychic visit who heard growling and was totally freaked out by my son's room. After she left, my son found a child's dirty handprint on the wall of his room. It hadn't been there before. It gets weirder. A good friend of mine brought his new girlfriend around. Turns out, she used to live in the house with her parents and many siblings. The house terrifies her. She said that's why she and her family moved out. She then proceeded to tell us experiences which were numerous and scary. The one that got me really involved, her and the kids she was nannying for, there were ten. They'd play in the backyard and she'd occasionally look out the window to count heads. Sometimes there would be eleven. She saw the eleventh once, a little girl. I put all her stories on my blog to make sure that I never forget them. The next step for me was to call the local paranormal investigators, SPCTR, to do their thing. This group is a member of the TAPS family, the TV ghost hunters, and are very professional. They caught a lot of EVPs. One captured in my bedroom was a child's voice saying, What happened? Footsteps and a loud bang were also recorded. The local newspaper and local TV station asked to interview me in the house for Halloween stories. They took it seriously, and I hoped by doing them, others who may experience strange events in their homes will realize that they're not alone, and that they have options available to them. I still have activity, and I still report it on my blog. And... I sleep with my light on. And the next story comes from my daughter, Samantha. About four years ago, when my son was a newborn, I had something crazy happen. My husband, newborn, and I were sitting in the living room watching a movie before bed. All of a sudden, in the kitchen, we hear a really loud noise like grinding metal. It scared my husband and I both. I jumped up to see what it was since my husband was holding the baby. Our blender had turned on by itself. You have to push down hard on the buttons to turn it on. We have a cat and we were thinking maybe she jumped onto the counter and walked on it to turn it on. It wasn't the cat, she was with us in the living room the whole time. It's still creepy thinking about it. Also, my grandma used to live in this house and she had weird things happen to her. The sink in the bathroom just fell off the wall one night. Also, in her bedroom, she had a TV set on her dresser, and one night it just watching TV and it fell off of the dresser. I couldn't believe it when she told me that. My son says there's a ghost in his room all the time, but I'm not sure if he's really seeing something or if it's just him being a four-year-old little boy and playing around. And next, I am going to give you a personal experience of mine. I've had many. And actually, in this house that we had lived in at this time that I was 16 years old, that house was over 110 years old. And that house itself had a lot of different crazy activities. And what was weird about it was, at first, my stepdad and I were the only ones that ever heard or had anything happen is just to the two of us and my mom always you know, said you guys are crazy but after I actually moved out of the house then I came back I don't know a couple months later when I was visiting and she's like I finally believe you I'm like, what and she said that every night 
when they got done with supper, they would go and do the dishes, dry them, put them away, and go sit in the living room. And then they heard the water turn on, the dishes being washed in the sink, them being put like in the dish drainer, and then the cupboards being opened, dishes put away, and they go out there and there would be absolutely nobody in the kitchen. There'd be no cupboards open or anything like that. But I don't know if that particular thing was like a haunting or just a time warp or whatever you'd want to call that one. But one of the times I won't forget there was everybody had just left to go out to the lake and I was at home by myself and I saw them leave with the car I locked the front door and then I went into the bathroom and probably about five minutes had gone by and I hear the door to their bedroom open up and somebody stomped up the stairs like they were mad and then the, when they got to the top of the stairs, the door slammed shut. I was like, what in the world? I know I locked the door. I didn't hear anybody coming in. And how did that person open the door, pound, stomp up the stairway, and then when they get to the top, slam the door? Like, this makes no sense. So I actually grabbed a baseball bat and went up and checked their room to see what was going on. And there was absolutely nobody there. There was nobody in the house. And the doors were still locked. Craziest thing that probably had happened there. The other things were, I don't know, not as... I don't know, not like they were mad or anything. But just like normal people living and walking and just doing daily stuff. But... That one really caught my attention, I think, the most because whatever it was was actually angry. And that's going to wrap up this episode of the Paranormal Planes, our pilot episode. I thank everybody that took the time to listen tonight, and I hope that that makes you excited to share your own stories with us. And my goal is to do, like, hopefully an hour-long podcast, at least 40, 45 minutes from now on. But I need them stories to keep coming in. And I just ask that the stories that come in are actually from the Great Plains area. It's um, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Montana. Anything from the Great Plains kind of keep it local and have a specialized channel for us. I know there's definitely enough ghost stories and paranormal stories to go around just in South Dakota alone. So combine that with the other states and we should be busy for years upon years and it doesn't have to be just ghost stories either you know it can be ufos bigfoot anything paranormal it's all really intriguing to me and i just would love to hear everybody's story and you don't even have to like sit, have your actual name on there either you know you can just say please be an anonymous or use a fake name or whatever you know we, we won't uh, force anybody to give their names won't give the names without permission so get a hold of us on paranormal planes podcast on facebook and you can put the stories up there right on the wall if you'd like or just send a message to that page and I will read the story on the next podcast that I do. So hopefully I'm going to shoot for 
at least every Monday or something. That way I have the weekend to put together the podcast. And on Mondays, uh, hopefully there'll be a new episode with new stories and all the new happenings around. So until next time, thank you guys and have a great evening.